those awaiting the visit of the parents' guests find their hearts beating with greater expectation than before Christmas. It is not due to the presence, but to a transformed life. The perfume, which the lady guest places on the bureau while one is permitted to watch the unpacking, has a scent-like memory, even when it is inhaled for the first time. The luggage with the stickers from the Hotel Sevretta and Madonna di Campligio are chests in which the precious gems of Aladdin and Alibaba, wrapped in expensive cloth, the kimonos of guests, are borne out of the caravanaceries of Switzerland and South Tyrol on sleeping wagon cushions for sated observation. And just as fairies talk to children in fairy tales, so too does the guest talk earnestly, without condescension, to the children of the house. They ask knowledgeably about lands and people, and the guests, not acquainted with their daily habits and seeing nothing but the fascination in their eyes, answers with profound statements about the feeble-mindedness of a brother-in-law and the marital spats of the nephews. Thus the children feel accepted at a stroke into the mighty and secret alliance of adults, the magic circle of reasonable people. The rules of the day are suspended. Perhaps tomorrow they may even be allowed to sip school, along with the borders between the generations. And whoever has not been sent to bed by 11 o'clock has an inkling of true promiscuity. The single visit ordains Thursday as a festival in whose euphoria all of humanity seem to be invited. For the guest comes from far away. The guest's appearance promises the children something beyond the family and reminds them that this latter is not the only thing. The longing for incohate happiness in the pond of salamanders and storks, which the child painfully learned to restrain, and which is distorted by the boogeyman of the black man, of the villain who wishes to kidnap them. Here, the children find that longing again, without fear. Amidst the nearest and dearest, there appears the figure of what is different. The fortune-telling gypsy, who is let into the front door, is absolved in the lazy visitor and transfigured into a rescuing angel. She dispels the curse on the happiness of what is nearest of all by wedding it to what is most distant. The entire being of the child waits for this, and whoever does not forget the best parts of childhood must still be able to wait like this. Love counts the hours until the moment the parents' guests step, step over the threshold and once again reconstruct the washed-out life through something impercept imperceptible. Here I am again, back from the wide world. <laughs>